make some of it up. What's going on? Ten seconds. You know I'd like to call tonight's Sons of Planning Board meeting to order. Please call the roll. Ron LaHoulier. Here. Paul Rabitis. Here. Jason Berry. Here. Jeremy Rhodes. Here. Chris Horton. Here. David Witham. Here. Robert Belmore. Here. Paul Goodwin. Here. Kenneth Vincent. Doug Haberman. Here. This time I'd like to appoint Mr. Goodwin and Mr. Haberman as full voting members for the evening. Next item is approval of the minutes of October 18, 2023. Anybody have a motion? Mr. Chair, move to accept as presented. Motion made by Mr. Byers, seconded by Mr. Berry. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed or abstain? Next item is committee reports. City Council report. Mr. Witham. I'll be very brief this evening. Uh, the zoning ordinance amendment, uh, chapter 19, regarding the uh, historic district, the historic overlay district. As you know, I've proposed legislation at the council le level to reduce the size of that uh, uh, by an amount. Uh, there are three uh, areas denoted on the zoning overlay map to be removed from the historic district. Uh, quickly, uh, sort of geographically, it, it bodes well to take a look at a map. I know you can get a look at that map in the planning office if you would like to. Uh, and I may actually ask that the planning staff send that out to planning board members so they can see that. Um, it removes the historic district from uh, the section of property between Winter Street and the railroad tracks along that sliver of land, if you will, so the northerly side of Winter Street. Uh, currently, there are no homes on that stretch except for, I think there's one or two at the very uh, easterly end of that corridor. Uh, and then there's the Bretton's Cleaners vacant site right now. Uh, the other area proposed from removal is on the uh, easterly side of High Street uh, uh, from uh, approximately Pleasant Street. Uh, there's a property there with a large uh, stack concrete block retaining wall to like a patio uh, uh, northerly to uh, Constitutional Way where the Bruton, I mean where the Barabee, the Barabee, the, uh, where the law office is. Uh, Coolidge. Coolidge Law Office, thank you. Um, FX is here so often I got used to that name. Uh, and then the other section is uh, largely uh, south of here. Uh, the area around Elm Street, uh, what's known as Broad Street, which is really a, a, a grass street uh, in that section <coughs> over there. So those are like the three pods of areas slated for removal. Um, that remains in committee with the Council's Economic Development Committee, uh, and the Economic Development Committee will have a meeting coming up jointly with the Historic District Commission to uh, delve into that in greater detail. There'll be a report back to full council, I suspect before our December meeting and uh, potential action at the December meeting. Uh, that's all I have for tonight, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Witham. Stratford Regional Planning Commission update, Mr. Horton. Uh, no report this evening, uh, we are scheduled to meet Friday. Thank you very much. 2030 committee, Mr. Berry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, so I actually do have a report for change. All right, so uh, we had our meeting on 1025. It was a really good meeting. Uh, spent a good portion of time recapping where we were and what we covered up to that point. We did spend a significant amount of time looking at uh, sustainability, so that particular category. And we had a whole bunch of great topics in there, uh, specifically the solar farm, which we'll actually be taking a look at tonight, which is, which is very exciting. Um, there was also discussion about the, the new energy committee that's going to be looking towards uh, helping define and plan our city goals for electricity usage. Um, let's see, we also talked about some other topics, some, some a little bit harder than others. For example, uh, we talked about residential growth, right? So uh, we did have that um, housing workshop roughly about a month and a half, two months ago, and how the... Uh, uh, basically, the number of units is going up dramatically, and what are we going to do about it, right? Uh, we also talked about the homeless population, aid, 
um, and on some other topics like inclusion and diversity. We had some really great conversation about that as well. Uh, we also spent time looking at the library and recreation category, and we had some uh, topics brought up specifically around senior programming, right? So uh, Councilor Cameron was very proud of the uh, senior walking program, and she hopes to see that grow. Uh, we also spent time talking about the Mally Farm with the boat and kayak launch and also developing trails. So these are just ideas. Nothing is formal at this point. Uh, when we do have something official, we will bring it to you for review. Thank you, Ms. Berry. Thank you. Land Use Board reports. You had the summary in your packet. Does anybody have any comment on them? Seeing no, we'll move on. Any old business coming before the board this evening, Director Mears? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Move on to item four, new business. Item A, WDS LLC is seeking a lot line adjustment between properties located along Willand Drive in the Commercial Industrial CI District, assesses map 43, lot 1J, map, map 43, lot 1K, and map 43, lot 1I, sub number 03, 2023. Director Mayor, is there anything to add? Yes, so the applicant is seeking to merge lots 1-J and 1-K to be known as lot 1J and then adjust the lot lines between the new lot 1J and 1-I along the Willen Drive uh, right away. This portion of Willen Drive is private. The existing cul-de-sac will be reconstructed as part of this plan. Uh, staff recommends that the board accept this application as complete and begin the review process. Thank you very much. Entertain a motion to accept. So moved. Motion made by Mr. Robitis, second by Mr. Horton. Discussion. Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Stoll. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bob Stoll at Tritech Engineering, representing the uh, property owners this evening. And, uh, Dave Franger from, from WDS is here, as well as Mike Galuzzo from Central Fence. Um, this is, the proposal is pretty much as, as uh, Director Mears outlined. What, we're like, what we would like to do is um, the T2 in your package, you can see. Yeah, here we go. That, that good? Everybody can see that? Um, from the, the photo on your T2, you can see where the existing cul-de-sac is, and we're proposing to bring it back about 125 feet and reconstruct it at that location. And it, that, combined with the merger of, of these two undeveloped lots back here, uh, gives a, a much larger uh, developable build, building envelope um, to, 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 for suitable for a larger user than the two, the two separate lots. So the 125 feet, is, it improves that building envelope pretty, pretty, pretty dramatically. So that's the goal there. In your package, you have, have plans on how we, we, we plan to reconstruct the, the cul-de-sac. Your, uh, your sheet BLA2, Boundary Line Adjustment 2, uh, has, has the best detail, and we did a little, added a little bit of color here. Uh, the, main, the main goal here is, is a, a, the elimination of this pink part, but in, in conjunction with that, the reconstruction takes a little bit of land swapping between the remaining land. We've got some uh, coming from Mr. Galuzzo's property here, and in exchange for that, he gets a little green wedge here. And then we've just got some um, wings here that were part of the overall parcel that need to be part of the right of way now. And so there's, there's five little pieces, but it, it, it just effectuates the, the relocation of the cul-de-sac. Be happy to answer any questions. All right, thank you. At this time, I'll open up to the public hearing. Anybody care to comment on this item? Director Mears, any correspondence concerning this application? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Seeing none, close public hearing. Questions from the board? Mr. Witham. Yeah, this, this makes all the sense in the world. It looks pretty straightforward, uh, despite the, the number of lines being drawn here. It, it looks like we're just you know, sort of moving the cul-de-sac back, merging those two lots for a greater building envelope, as you said. Exactly. Will and Drive in that section, that is a city road right now, so. It, it's not, it, it, it's, it's uh, contemplated, it was dedicated as a city road, but it was never, never offered for acceptance at this point. So the, the goal here would be to, after this reconstruction, to offer it for, for acceptance, but right. it has So it would be just that little leg, because you said from Commercial Drive up is, is, is that, not, right? That, so that is correct. Got it. Yep. Okay. 
Understood. So it doesn't require any city council action at this point. So this is, that, that makes this a whole lot more streamlined. At the a moment. Absolutely. So I'm good with it. Thanks. Any other questions from the board? Question is conditions of approval. Yep. So plan revisions. Please revise the plans to label the combined lots 1J and 1K as lot 1J per the city of Summersworth assessor. Uh, the final plan shall bear the stamp and signature of an engineer and licensed land, land surveyor. Uh, monumentation must happen with granite bounds. Uh, applicants shall submit to the planning department a copy of a sign and notarized deed which will affect the conveyance of the subject property before or at the time the plot is certified by the planning department. Once the plant plot is certified, the deed must be recorded uh, with the plot. An escrow account uh, in the amount set by the city's contract engineer and agreeable to the Department of Development Services will be established. A performance surety in amount agreeable to the Department of Development Services, but no less than 25% of the cost of construction uh, shall be submitted and as built plans will be required. Okay, thank you. Entertain a motion for regional impact. Mr. Chairman, I'd move that the uh, project has no potential for regional impact. Motion made by Mr. Witham, seconded by Mr. Barry. Discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Those opposed? Motion passes. And Mr. Mr. Chairman, I did have a couple of questions on, on the uh, conditions of approval when it's appropriate. Okay. Th thank you. Uh, ju just as, as relates to the uh, uh, monumentation, you've, you've got that in there prior to final approval, signing the the plat, we, we are going to reconstruct that, that cul-de-sac. So typically in this scenario, we, we would, that would be part of the construction bond, uh, the monumentation, so that we're not putting bounds in now and having them dis disturbed during construction. So if we could move that to that down, the, down the list a little bit would, would be good. And the second one is, is C. I just hadn't seen C before. Um, again, logistically, that can be, can be challenging, uh, that we, we can't do deeds until we have a recorded plan. And, and uh, again, I just wasn't sure. W I hadn't seen a condition like that before. I wasn't sure if there was some specific intent behind that. It ju just creates the, low the degree of difficulty goes up trying to coordinate all that. So as far as the monumentation, I'm fine if we move that down to conditions to be completed prior to the start of work. And the applicant, uh, just as long as we get the plan set, the final plans, that's fine. Okay, yes. Yeah. That, that's what we would normally do. We would yeah. get you the plan set. Uh, it gets recorded, and, and then at, at their, the appropriate times, they transfer their deeds. Okay, so we can amend that. You good with that? Yep, I'm good with that. Thank you. Entertain a motion for the lot line adjustment. Mr. Witham. Yeah, I'd move that the request of Central Gillespie LLC and WDS LLC for a lot line adjustment between properties located uh, and shown on the boundary line adjustment plans be approved with the conditions as amended uh, this evening. Motion made by Mr. Witham, seconded by Mr. Robitus. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Those opposed? Motion passes. All right, thank you. Item B under new business, Central Fence and Deck is seeking a conditional use permit and site plan approval to construct a 6,720 square foot facility with associated infrastructure on a property located at Willan Drive in the Commercial Industrial CI District. Assessors map 43, lot 1I, site number 14, 2023, and CUP number 04, 2023. Director Mayor, is there anything to add? Yes, so the applicant is seeking to construct a 6,720 square foot facility for central fence and deck 
and infrastructure with two product display areas and a fenced in outdoor storage area as part of this application. The applicant is also seeking a conditional use permit for 5,275 square feet of pavement and impervious surface and 9,645 square feet of grading and drainage and uh, pervious impact to the wetland buffer. The Conservation Commission reviewed the CUP request at the, nine, the September 13th meeting and recommended approval with conditions. There are several waivers with this uh, application, which include vehicular circulation and parking, sh uh, streets, driveways, and the sidewalk waiver, a waiver to appearance standards, and a waiver to site lighting. Okay, thank you. Entertain a motion to accept the application. So moved, Mr. Chair. Motion made by Mr. Robitis, seconded by Mr. Goodwin. Any discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Oppose? Application is accepted. Mr. Stoll. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bob Stoll at Tritech Engineering, representing uh, Mike Luzo and, and Central Fence. Um, this was in front of TR. TRC back in, in early September and then again, again uh, early no November. Uh, it, it was uh, f it well received, although we did have, have comments that we were dealing with. Uh, resubmittal in, in uh, November addressed uh, the majority comments at that point. Outstanding was uh, uh, we hadn't received the third party review from, from Hosley Witten. Uh, that hadn't come back yet. I, we that did come back the end of last week. So there is an outstanding letter from Horsley Witten. We've reviewed that and, and don't see any issues that can't can't be re resolved with uh, with that. No 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 heavy lifting on on that. Um, this we talked about this a little bit when uh, uh, we were here. Gee, maybe la this time last year when uh, uh, Central Fence had a, a compliance issue out on R Route 108, and uh, this this is the ultimate solution to that. Uh, compliance issue out there is to is to get him located in an area that's suitable for his his use that he designed for his use and can spread out uh, with his product ap appropriately. So we've been working with him since since that time to get in and get this in front of you. And uh, um, again, I think I think it's uh, um, uh, to this point has been vetted vetted very well. But be happy to go go through some of the things we had. We did go to the, the conservation commission. Um, this area out there is, is uh, um, an area that has been in a state of flux for a number of years. It's a fairly well disturbed site. Uh, th this this uh, um, new new pavement, new building, and, and landscaping and drainage will be will definitely be an improvement out there. I, I, and I think uh, um, um, Conservation Commission understood that there were a couple of conditions that they asked that had been included on the new CUP one that's in in your plan set this evening. Uh, so I, I think we're on on the right the right track with with uh, the conditional use permit. As noted, there are there are some waivers, um, and a couple of them came up during the the review process. We've got um, one of them was to do with with curbing, and we do curb. Uh, if we can get a better picture up here, um, we curb as we come in here. On, the, on this area here, and we, we curb this area here where we have, have landscaping. We do have some street trees here. Um, they're for uh, what we had proposed as red maple that are now, uh, we're gonna switch to red oaks. Uh, but the, the thought with staff was that this, this qualified as a landscape island, therefore should be curbed. Um, in that the way we've designed our drainage, we, we want our, our, our drainage to come, come across here and sheet flow to a, an area here. As, and and uh, so the trees are set along there. So you've got about a, a, a 20, 25 foot setback from the edge of pavement to the trees. We don't think there's really any danger of, of landscaping being damaged because there isn't curb there. William Drive uh, wasn't proposed without any curbing and no curbing in place there. So we thought that that was a, a reasonable re request. Um, in addition, during the process, uh, police department recommended that we, we look at a waiver for outdoor lighting so that it doesn't have to be shut off at 10 o'clock. They're concerned about uh, the homeless population out there and, and protecting the property from, from uh, n 
nighttime visits. So uh, we, we did, uh, again, we'll, we'll play that by ear to see what the, the need is, but we wanted the ability to, if, if it need be, to keep the lighting on beyond the 10 o'clock deadline that's typically required. So those, those two came up during the process. Uh, ones that we had originally started with was the, uh, the, the one that like, seems like we do a lot is the bike, bike rack waiver. Um, again, given the type of use, um, we don't envision anybody riding up on their bike and heading off with a fence. Um, the, 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 em the, the employees are, if there's an employee that bikes in, he's, he's going to haul his bike in, inside the shop. So we, we didn't think the, the bike rack was, 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 was on point here either. The, the two um, uh, that we talked about it at SRTC a little bit was one is the appearance standards. Um, in your package, you've got the look of the building. It's, it's, a, it's a generic industrial building. Um, what, what staff suggested was that we, and you can see on the landscape plan, is we really played up the foundation plannings um, at the building to, again, try and soften that, that metal building look to it. But it is, it is an industrial building in an industrial area out there. But it, it, so it, do, it does require um, a waiver to that, to that standard. And um, again, seems like a popular one, the sidewalk. Uh, Willen Drive doesn't have any sidewalks on it and uh, uh, was, wasn't proposed with the original project and, and uh, aren't any sidewalks in the, in the area. So again, we'd be asking for a waiver to the sidewalks. So uh, long list, but I don't think anything in, anything in there that, that was uh, uh, that out of, that out of line. Uh, that being said, I'd be happy to answer questions from the board. All right, thank you. It's time for public hearing. Any comment from the public? Any correspondence considering this item? Director Mayors. None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Seeing none, close public hearing. Questions from the board? Mr. Witham. Thank you. Um, this may seem unusual, but I'm actually good with all the waiver requests. I think they, <laughs> they, 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 they make sense out here. Um, you know, the apparent standards, uh, yes, it is a metal industrial building, but I do appreciate the foundation plantings. Um, it's an area of Willand uh, Drive that unless you were going to this establishment, you're probably not going to go buy it, right? It's a, it's a dead end cul-de-sac. Correct. Um, I think we also approved a project on the corner of Willand and Commercial, which has uh, a bit of an industrial look to it as well. Uh, so I think it's consistent with uh, the the area. And, you know, just down the road is the uh, machine shop uh, that has a uh, industrial look to it. So again, consistent with uh, with the area uh, for sure. Uh, I would agree sidewalks don't make sense here. It's not going to be a heavily pedestrian area. There are no sidewalks in William Drive, none proposed, so I, I, oddly enough, I'm good with that. Uh, I also appreciate the site lighting uh, request. Typically, when in, in our uh, restrictions on that, we allow a certain amount of lighting to be left on for security purposes. Okay. I, I guess that's to the discretion of the applicant what that is, but... Uh, I can appreciate the, the the request there. Is it mostly building mounted lighting here? It it is yeah. it, it, exactly. Um, and again, with regard to the curbing, I think that makes sense as well. I appreciate you curbing that first drive in uh, and that landscape jut out on the corner. Uh, that that would seem to make sense. Um, what I would like to talk about, though, and, and again, it goes back to lighting. At the end of Willand Drive, that's a, a dead end cul-de-sac. I, I would hazard to guess when it, the street comes in front of council for approval, we're going to want a street light at the end of that road uh, because of the dead end nature of it. So this might be the time and place to plug that in. I was wondering, is there not a utility pole? I was looking at the plans right on the corner of that landscape island. Is that a place where we could install a LED? street lamp consistent with what we have in the city to the the um, right above the eye in Willand yeah right right here oh, further down further further down up, up in here there. let me yeah uh, we've got another Wait, putting in another pole because that's pretty darn close to the end what we've got here is is on your sp3 or your sp2 in your package as a little more detail the existing pole is is, is right here 
And so would the applicant be amenable to installing a Cobra Arm street light consistent with what we have in the city? Sure, I, 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 absolutely. That, that would just make sense. It would light that end if you yeah. Other than that, I, I am good with this from my perspective. Thank you. Ms. Berry. All right, so Councilor Witham stole most of my thunder. <laughs> Actually, I agree with them 100%. Um, I think all the waivers are very much reasonable here. Um, honestly, if I was designing that parking lot, I would have done the same thing. Um, you know, that's a very shallow grade going from, from where you're trying to pool to where you're trying to uh, move it over to the pond. So absolutely, um, completely agree. Uh, I, I say no curbing there, personally. I'll vote for that. Um, as far as the lighting, I uh, also agree with uh, Councillor Witham as far as the having the Cobra Neck out on the street. At least on the on the site, I'd like to see all the lights be downlit and shielded. Yes, that, that, that's... Perfectly, you know, so... Yes, um, they, they, that, that spec is there as well as the, the individual lighting is, is included in the package. That, that is the style that they, they are uh, always. Yeah. Great. And I'm all set. Thank you. Mr. Rhodes. So largely agreeing with um, Jason and David on this one. I think everything you proposed there makes perfect sense. <clears throat> I just wanted to touch a little bit on the, the CUP aspects and what was discussed on conservation for that. Um, normally, we get a, a little twitchy about this much impervious disturbance of a buffer. But in this case, it's actually likely to make things better on this site. Um, as Mr. Stoll rec mentioned, there's a ton of disturbance in the earthworks around this place. It was actually the subject of a compliance um, issue that came up in front of, uh, of conservation that we forwarded on. Um, and really the only thing that was happening on the site with it in terms of the soil was it was washing down into a wetland. So what you're doing here with paving over it to a degree but also directing it to the uh, treatment phase is actually likely to improve this site pretty dramatically. Um, the other thing is we hadn't gotten a look at the landscape plan on conservation, which we usually like to see, but I think you're doing a really good job hiding an industrial building with plantings as much as you can. Um, so I think you're, you're dealing with some challenges that are on the site and the nature of the building and compensating for them well. Um, I think it's a really good plan and doing a good thing for the uh, wetlands that are nearby as well. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Obitus. The only question I had, Bob, on, for the lighting was I know that trailer park sits out in that area. Um, how close will that lighting bother them at all? Um, if, you know, we got lights on that are on at 2, 3 in the morning, that potentially we're going to have a... Yeah, I mean, we're, we're uh, if, we, if we look here... It, it looks pretty far away. It, it, uh, it my is. only concern was winter time when the trees strip, strip off. Yep. I mean, you've got, you've got the, the power line easement that comes through. You've got a couple of structures. That, that this, this is quite a bit higher here behind those two buildings. Again, the, the, the most likely chance of any light getting through is, is, is down through here. And, it, and it's quite a distance. Okay. Mr. Horton. I'll just jump on the wagon too, and I can appreciate the uh, improvements making you're making to the site. And uh, I agree too with all the waivers uh, make uh, are perfectly reasonable on the site here. So I got no objections. Thanks. Thank you. Sister Bowmore. Yeah. So I guess I understood the lighting to just be on the building. It, it is building, except for the the light that that. That uh, council with it. With what about the parking had. lot for this time of year, when they might be working to five or six o'clock? I don't know what their hours are. Wouldn't you want parking light for safety for the trucks coming and going? And well, and the, way, the way it's the way it's laid out, we've got we've got our our uh, um, again. I think uh, your detailed plan here shows a little bit le better, but we've got lighting here, here, and here, and this this is our customer parking. So you're actual, you know, where you're getting out of your car and walking is all within about 25 feet of your lights, which which we've got the lighting plan that shows. We we asked the lighting consultant to get a minimum of a one foot candle on on the parking spaces, and they've been able to do, to do that with here. And again, the same in the back where we have employee parking, and we've got a light and light here that 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 achieves that. So we did certainly consider that, but given the locations of the spaces, we were able to do it with building mounted lights. Mr. Goodwin. And just while, <clears throat> while we're talking about lighting, um, this I think that's fine. Uh, I'm not gonna make it a condition, but I would encourage um, them to consider temperature. The, that daylight blue, again, for residential abutters is just a little more penetrating than a slightly warmer color temperature and you can get the same 
uh, lumens. So for, you know, whatever, for functionality, you'll have the same function. It's just, it's a little less um, daunting to a butters. Uh, so something to consider. But the question I actually have <clears throat> is related to your catch basin uh, 101, which is in the, um, the, you know, the planter island without a curb. Just a dumb question in general. I see that there's snow storage there, and I think, you know, obviously that makes a lot of sense in terms of location. Is there any concern that the snow storage on top of that catch basin is going to cause drainage or backup during the winter? We, we don't we don't find that usually the the, the uh, again even if you have a, a, a snowpack there um, the, the the rain is warm enough where, where or if you have snow melt it's warm enough that it, it creates a, a, a route to the catch basin okay mr. Horton yeah just while one final thought um, with the existing property I know we've had a disposal issue there in the past I'm just kind of curious on uh, we get, we're not, we're not going to have that in this property, and I guess kind of what is the, um, is there a dumpster, a large dumpster available to kind of handle that waste type yeah. removal? Yeah, that was something, again, that came up during the review, review process um, that he has changed at his existing location to, uh, rather than stacking uh, the materials, he does have two, two industrial dumpsters there, one metal, one wood, and, and we have added that to the site plan. Uh, at this location as well, so we can uh, alleviate that issue. That's it. Any other questions from the board? This time, entertain a waiver for regional impact. A motion. So moved. Motion made by Mr. Uh, Elmore, second by Mr. Goodwin. Discussion. I was baby raise your right hand. Opposed. <laughs> Next item is waiver request. The first one would be the uh, bike rack. Motion, motion to approve the waiver for the bike rack. Second. Motion made by Ms. Belmore, seconded by Mr. Abitus. Discussion. All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Next waiver would be for uh, parking lot design standards. Anybody have a motion? Move to grant the waiver. Is that the current okay. Motion made by Mr. Abitus. Yeah, right I don't know if you want to formally state the waiver. And we're talking about the landscape design or the other appearance standards. Applicant has proposed a flat roof metal building. So um, move to approve the appearance standards um, waiver as presented. Are we voting on that, or are we voting on the vehicular circulation? I'm I think the appearance. I'm confused where we're at. Parking lot design standards mitigation for the impact of parking lots, landscape areas. We protect them from encroachment of vehicles by curbing, landscaping, timbers, oh. curb stops, or other acceptable means. It's separate waivers here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well said. <laughs> Mr. Bevan, Mr. Abitus. That's very helpful. <laughs> Second. I think I'm seconding it. By Mr. Witham. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Mr. Chairman, for motion uh, number three on the waiver request, uh, the waiver from the sidewalk, I'll make the motion that we grant that waiver. Might Second. The first and only time in my Motion made by Mr. Witham, second by Mr. Belmore. Discussion. You can make note of it. It's, it's, it's on tape. It's a good one. Never mind, I answered my question. We're good. What's that? Any further questions or discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Waiver granted. Number four, appearance standards. Building features and materials. Anybody have a motion? Move that we Mr. grant Witham. the waiver from the appearance standards. Motion made by Mr. Witham. Second. Second by Mr. Rhodes. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver is granted. Waiver number five, site lighting. Way of motion. Mr. Horton. Move that the request to central fence and deck for the waiver from section 12.8C of the site plan regulation to allow security lighting to remain on throughout the night be approved. 
Motion made by Mr. Horton. Second by Mr. Witham. Discussion. Mr. Barry. Does that include the Cobra neck on the street? I think that's a that comes on by itself, right? Uh, yeah, is that a separate, separate, separate line item? Yes. Yeah. Okay, all right. Mr. Bowmore. Uh, is the applicant willing to, to uh, make a condition to, or how do we do that, make a note of, as, as far as uh, Mr. Goodwin's comment about um, the type of lighting? Is, is that something we put on the plan or make a condition of approval, or, or are you amenable? Is that the right word I want? to it uh, well, let me just we, we did submit some some lighting specs uh, with the original um, and let me just see what uh, want to get technical topic discussion <laughs> Klein <laughs> What's that? Klein yeah I wish <laughs> It is. Could you, do you have that in your... Uh, I did see the spec. I didn't Google it, and it didn't seem uh, evident on, on the spec, but I saw what the, uh, what the color temperature was. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Women's weight, efficiency spottage, they're strong, available in 5,000, 4,000, and 3,000. I would recommend you stay away from 5,000 and 4,000 and go towards the 3,000 Kelvin. And that, that, is, that is what we just spent on the plan. Perfect. So we're, we're good. We're good. We're okay. Thank you. Good discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? I lost my paperwork. Let me check it. Next is the uh, motion for conditional use permit. Is there anything to add beforehand? Correct me is. Uh, the Conservation Commission just had the following conditions. No soil shall be removed from the site without state permission due to the invasive plantings, and a landscape plan shall be submitted and shall include trees from the approved planting list and the site plan regulations. Thank you. Entertain a motion for the conditional use permit. Mr. Rhodes. Uh, so moved with the two conditions set by conservation. Second. second by Mr. Rhodes, second by Mr. Belmore. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Conditional use permit Commit is granted. Thank you. Next, we get into the site plan application request. Director me is here to review conditions. Yes, plan revisions revise the stormwater management, maintenance, and inspection plan to indicate that annual reports shall be submitted July 1st of each year. Please list all waivers granted on the plan set to replace the four October glory red maple trees in the front landscape island with four red oaks. Any outstanding comments from third party review completed by Horsley Witten for a drainage report shall be addressed to the satisfaction of Director of Planning and Community Development. Uh, an LED Cobra arm street light uh, shall be added to the existing utility pole. Conditions that must be met prior to final approval. The final plan shall bear the stamp and signature of an engineer, licensed land survey, and landscape architect. All federal and state permits shall be received. A copy and certificate of an understanding for stormwater management, maintenance, and inspection plan signed by the property owner. Um, conditions to be completed prior to the start of site work. Uh, construction cost estimate for the project. Building plan shall bear the stamp of a certified protection engineer licensed in New Hampshire to certify compliance with all egress, emergency lighting, smoke, heat, and CO detection systems, fire alarm monitoring and reporting systems, fire suppression systems, and any other fire protection or related uh, life safety systems required by National or New Hampshire Fire Code. A pre-construction meeting is required. An escrow in the amount set by the city's contract engineer and agreeable to Department of Development Service Services shall be established. A preferment surety in amount agreeable to the Department of Development Servi Services but not less than 25 percent. Water and sewer connection permit is required. Erosion controls shall be installed on site prior to any uh, start of construction, uh, landscaping survival uh, surety, 10 percent of the total cost of landscaping or a minimum of $500. Uh, an applicant, all applicants requiring a stormwater management and erosion control plan shall submit relative pollutant accounting information to the Director of Planning and Community Development. Post-construction pollutant information must be entered at time of as belts are submitted. 
The applicant shall obtain all applicable permits through the Department of Public Works. This shall include, but not limited to, driveway permit, utility pole license, and trench permits. Uh, this structure will require a new address assignment. Please submit a request for a new address to the city engineer. Per section 1923E9, the building shall display the designated address number in such a manner as to be visible from the street, conditions applicable during and after construction. For all projects approved under conditional use permit, signs shall be placed at the edge of the vegetated buffer. Those signs are available uh, in the Department of Development Services. The signs shall be installed prior to the issuance of certificate of occupancy. Uh, there shall be no wetlands degradation. A copy of the completed stormwater inspection and maintenance log shall be provided to development services uh, by July 1st. All landscaping shown on the plan shall be maintained in good condition. All outdoor lighting shall be downlit and shielded and as-built plans are required. And that's it. Thank you. Mr. Horton. I'd like to make a motion that I move that the request to central fence and deck for site plan approval to construct a 6,720 square foot facility with associated infrastructure on property located at Willand Drive, Assessor's Map 43, Lot 1I, be approved with the following conditions as stated here tonight by the Planning Department Director. Which made by Mr. Horton. Second by Mr. Robitis. Discussion. Mr. Wisdom. Just a, a note for the applicant. Uh, it surfaced at Monday night City Council meeting. Um, there seems to be a bit of addressing confusion on that stretch of road. Okay. Uh, the new uh, sports dome uh, was slated to be 30 Willand Drive, but 30 Willand Drive is the current uh, homeless warming shelter. So things are askew out there. So. You may have a visit with the E911 committee to come up with an address, I suspect. Okay, all right, we'll, we'll get, get ahead of that early. Any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Site plan is approved. Right, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Item C, Blackwater Road Solar LLC on behalf of the City of Summersworth is seeking to develop a 2.63 megawatt direct current, 1.99 megawatt alternating current ground mount mounted solar photovoltaic array at the Summersworth Sanitary Landfill located on the property located at 17 Blackwater Road in the Agricultural A District, assesses map 22, lot 50, site number 18, 2023. Director Mears. Yeah, so the property is being developed with ground-mounted solar. The fenced in ground-mounted solar will cover 7.1 acres. Uh, this did go to the Site Review Technical Committee uh, for a courtesy review, and they've provided the following comments. Please provide a copy of the analysis of the impact of the solar rays to neighboring uh, residential or businesses and passer buyers to utilize a Knox box for the locking of the gate to ensure the emergency services can have access to the site to provide information on the industry standards for emergency response for the proposed types of solar arrays to be installed that the emergency procedures be provided for emergency situations dealing with the panel system emergency protocol training uh, be provided uh, to the fire department four shifts to build awareness of how the system works and shutoff locations and procedures for a plan of the wiring of the panels including a plan of final system design showing components and shutoff locations of the system and for seed you seed mix used on their race to be a, a low grow mix at this time the planning board is being asked to provide a courtesy review in regards to the proposed development and provide comments on the development this does fall under 674.54 as a governmental use of land. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ryan Fahey. I'm a senior project development manager with Amoresco. I have with me Rob Bukowski of Weston and Sampson. Uh, Amoresco was awarded uh, this project in March of 2022 
and we've been working alongside with the city to develop it since then. Um, I'd like to give just a, a quick background of how we got here, uh, given that it's the first time that we're here before you. Uh, so as I mentioned, we were awarded the project in, in spring 2022. Uh, we then applied to Eversource to interconnect the project. We received their approval in December 2022. Uh, and Along the way there, we were also negotiating contracts with the city, uh, a power purchase agreement, a lease agreement, and a pilot. In June, we executed all three of those contracts with the city um, and began our permitting process. We worked with the city's engineer, Geosyntec, to uh, prepare filings for New Hampshire DES and the EPA. Those filings went in in September and October uh, and are still under review and, and awaiting feedback. Uh, as was mentioned, we were also before the SRTC at the beginning of November and uh, received uh, the comments that were read a minute ago. Okay, thank you. Uh, with that, is there, are there any public comments? Any correspondence from the public on this item? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Seeing none, close public hearing. Is there any questions from the board? Mr. Goodwin. Is there a landscape plan that I'm missing? No, there's no landscape plan. Um. Kind of uh, it, I, I can just add a little bit more to that. So just, take your name just to and yeah, point out, Mr. Chairman, Rob Bukowski, Weston Sampson. Um, Mr. Chairman, may I interject just for a minute? Sorry, Ms. Belmont. Maybe if they gave a presentation, then we could ask questions. Or, or am I getting it backwards? Because it, it'd be nice to presentation over. Or I thought you were going to talk a little bit about the plan. Uh, yeah, where, yeah, where it's sure. located, yeah. you know. There, there was a big gap there. <laughs> yeah, it's like there will be a ton of questions unless you tell us, you know, it's on the Superfund site. Right. Uh, Geosyntex is our, the city engineer in regards to the Superfund site, security issues, maintenance issues, and all, fencing, all that. If you give an overview of the project details, sure. please. Yeah, so one of the reasons Ryan mentioned approval through DES and EPA is because it is a Superfund site. So. The proposed array is shown. Um, is this on? Yeah, it is. So these blocks here um, really represent each of the tables that hold a series of modules or solar panels. <clears throat> Access will be from the south here. Everything is ballasted, meaning it's above ground. So these, all these tables and racking are supported on large precast concrete blocks. The idea is we can't penetrate down into the soil cover that's on top of this landfill. Um, the entire outline of the array will be fenced. It's, a, I believe it's a seven foot high fence, which is the minimum required per National Electric Code. Um, so that really will, will be the security. Um, once this is constructed, there's very little maintenance. They'll probably mow it a couple times a year. Um, Amoresco has a remote operations center that monitors everything 24 seven. So if there's anything damaged, like a, an inverter or a series of panels, <clears throat> they'll be able to monitor and see that something's wrong and then they can send their personnel out um, to look at everything. But it's really, you know, again, once this is constructed, um, a couple maintenance visits per year for mowing and then as needed if there are any issues with the array. Um, even the fence, um, the fence itself is, is ballasted, so there's blocks where the, um, the fence posts go in. Again, everything above grade. We can't excavate down in at all, and we've had a series of conversations with EPA, and this goes back, you know, to the procurement period when Amoresco went through it, and they were adamant that nothing penetrates down into the soil cover. Um, one thing I will add is on the southern end here, along the street, we did do some test pits to confirm the extent of the soil cover, and there are utility poles that are proposed to be beyond the cover. So this is in native material or, or fill outside of the cover that's over the landfill. Um, even the, all the electric lines will be above ground. They'll be placed in either cable trays or electric conduits supported on blocks that usually have some kind of strut or bracket mounted to it. Everything's run, again, above ground. And then ultimately, it will go to this equipment pad, which is located pretty much in the center of the site. 
and then down um, alongside the access road until it goes above ground in these utility poles. And ultimately, um, the requirements for these utility poles are, are dictated by the utility. Um, so those need to be above ground. I think that's pretty much it. Mr. Witham. Thank you. Um, I appreciate the additional level of detail. Uh, I will say that I'm trying to picture where this is on the overall site. And um, when, when you talked about those utility poles at the very end of your comments, I'm assuming that's Blackwater Road on that edge. Correct. All right. Yeah. And uh, we have Pine uh, Parkview Terrace that goes in. I usually think of Parkview Terrace over by the fire station. This is between what's proposed to be your site and the current National Guard Readiness Center. So that access road that ultimately goes into the Little League field there. Um, and, and then just before it goes into where the Little League field parking lot is, it turns left and goes up. I'm assuming that this fence line is sort of following that road all the way around. So we're to the westerly side of what's identified here as Parkview Terrace, closest to Blackwater Road. Am I planting this correctly on the map? Got it. And you, you talk about this new, I assume it's a maintenance access road that's going over uh, the site. Uh, is that going to be paved? Is that gravel? How do you construct that if you can't go yeah, down? Yeah, it's, it's gravel. So what we do is, is place what's usually, not to get too technical, but it's a, a woven geotextile fabric over the ground. So we'll cut the vegetation as short as possible, put the geotextile fabric down, and then build the road up with gravel. So it'll be elevated above the surface of the landfill cap. And, and that road is put in for both construction and then will remain, remain in place for you know, long-term access and owner. And uh, I would just flag for your attention, it's probably already in your radar screen, a new gas line was recently installed along Blackwater Road on that side of the road. I think it's either an 8-inch or 10-inch line. It's fairly robust. So yeah, I don't think it's in the area where you put the utility poles, but it's, it's right between that edge. So just to be aware of that. Thank you for the help. Now, now these would be placed on top of the landfill? That's correct, yes. Okay, now let's kind of keep that from undulating and because they tried to build a ball field here in tennis courts at one time. Yeah, so these blocks are fairly substantial, about two feet wide by eight-ish feet long and about a foot or a foot and a half thick. Um, so they're, they're substantial. Um, we, we actually, I do have a Sort of an idea of how this looks, if anybody can, can see this, but it's this detail number three here. So you see it's a sizable block that goes in. Um, these are all precast, as I mentioned. So what they do is they put these um, basically braces into the center of these blocks and they cast them in. And then the racking is built on top of that. And then they come back in once the racking is built and they put the modules on the top. And then the last piece is wiring everything together. So no decomposition of any of that or it like it did the baseball field and the tennis courts? No, so, um, I mean, we've done, I've, I've worked with Amoresco on probably over 30 of these, and on some of these sites, we do um, O&M, like post-construction O&M inspections. We haven't seen any substantial settlement. I mean, mo most of these landfills settle more substantially at the beginning. It's sort of an exponential curve. Mr. Bomo. So, uh, Please accept my apologies, Mr. Goodwin, for interrupting, but I thought some level of detail before we get to questions. But in, in, in regards to the fence, can you describe chain link? Does it have slats in it? And if you don't mind, I'll, I'll reiterate uh, Mr. Goodwin's question about any vegetation or what type of uh, buffering or, um, pre, you know, visual from the road and, and abutting neighbors and that sort of thing. What, sure. What, um, it into the plan. So there's, there's no slats proposed in the fence. Um, one of the things, as I mentioned, there the foundation posts for the fence have to go in blocks. Um, the way that we do this is, is the hole in the block is bigger than the actual post so that if the block isn't perfectly level, you can still plumb the post and then grout around the, the void space. So um, if we were to put slats, or and we've run into this with some requirements where 
like a mini mesh fence, or in some cases even where we've done a bigger screening fence like cedar, the wind loads are substantially more because the wind's not allowed to pass through it. So those blocks get really big. Um, so the proposal is just what's required to meet the National Electric Code, which is a seven foot high chain link fence. Um, we aren't proposing any vegetation screening and the main reason being we're not allowed to plant anything in the cap that would require exca excavation into it. Ms. Goodwin. Is, is this a, a review? Are, are they required to come back to the planning board and follow regular site plan review or are they exempt given that this is the you know, it's a it falls under the governmental uses so they just have to come in for a courtesy review okay so that is this review yes okay uh, I guess um, I hear you uh, contaminated soils dig digging equal bad um, cool I'm good with the fence makes sense uh, I personally would really like to see an attempt to soften the edges um, there are residential neighborhoods near here there's a city owned site abutting this property that the city is looking to dispose of either for housing or some combination of housing or recreational use. Uh, I think many people in the community perceive this as open space and walk their dog there based on what I've heard. Um, so uh, I think having this go from what is ostensibly a beautiful meadow right now, even if it is contaminated uh, to a very industrial feeling solar farm. I'm very good with the solar use. I think it's valuable. I think the fence makes sense. I think there's just some sort of expectation or hope that um, it's a little less abrupt around the edges than just a seven foot tall chain link fence with warning signs all over it um, in the middle of an otherwise residential area. Um, I wonder if there's a way in which you could mound soils. I'm not, I, obviously you can't plant trees because you don't want to obstruct your solar. So this is, we're talking like shrubs, but I'm wondering if there's a way in which you could, you know, make a little hillocks periodically to plant some moderate size vegetation and to soften that edge. I think we'd need to run that by EPA. So I, unfortunately, I don't have an answer right now. It's something that, you know, you, you'd, just from a technical standpoint, you'd have to look at the height of the mound and how deep the roots go and all that just to ensure that nothing penetrates into the existing soil cover, so. So it's a, yeah, have you, just out of curiosity, do you have experience doing solar on similarly contaminated sites? Yes. Okay, and it is, ha, is there a precedent for pre other sites having vegetation? Not that I've been involved in, no. No, I mean, it's it's pretty limited. Um, thinking of all the projects that I've done with the Amoresco, I think there was one maybe that we constructed a berm on um, just to try to shield it. In, in that case, the fence was actually put on the berm um, to try to shield it from view. But that one was, like, right in a, um, a residential neighborhood. And that, that landfill was flat. And then there was a residential neighborhood that went up in elevation, so everybody was looking right down onto that. Um, I mean, in that case, it was sort of similar where people sort of used it for recreational uses, and the town, even if the solar array wasn't put in, they were going to put a fence around it just because people started doing things like sure. ATV traffic and things like that that were actually damaging. So I, I guess the, the short answer is on other Superfund sites is no, we haven't been required to do anything. And I think mainly it's because EPA has, you know, ultimate authority over it sure is is this epa or new hampshire des so it's this one epa is taking the lead okay. as the lead agency but des is reviewing it um both their you know environmental like waste management group as well as alteration of terrain group um i assume the delineation of the contamination in the cap are the well understood as they are noted on the plan they are uh i don't want to solve it here but i'm wondering if there's if it maybe outside of those areas of delineation it would be easier to maybe s selectively plant some buffer so along um, blackwater road we were pretty able to pretty well define where that was um on the eastern side not so much it wasn't as clear okay 
Meaning it could, you don't know where the cap ends? Pretty much, right. We're not sure if it goes exactly to the road, within the road, or how far back. So th this is a little bit different than a traditional landfill cap. Mm -hmm. um, this is a soil cover. So you don't have, I don't know how familiar you are with landfills, but usually there's a, a low impermeability layer, right? It's either clay or some kind of membrane. Then there's a sand drainage layer on top, and then there's usually a, a vegetated, like a topsoil layer to, to support grass growth. This cap is different. It just has the soil layer and then topsoil. I appreciate responses. I still, uh, I still would love to see some sort of effort to soften the edge, um, if that is feasible. Mr. Berry. All right. So I raised my hand for altogether different reasons, but I'm going to totally piggyback that. Um, okay, so the southern edge of the property along Blackwater, that's <coughs> not capped. There, there's, a, there's a steep hill. That was not the landfill, I can assure you. Um, there's, there's nothing underneath those, those basketball courts. So, you know, I'm thinking for the neighbors across the street, that classic not-in-my-backyard sort of mentality. I mean, even if, it, if it's just a small little planter shrub that to break up the field of arrays you're going to put out there um it would be nice okay there's probably a good i don't know probably 30 feet or so that you guys can put little trees in there right along the street line um i get it on the uh on the western side that i completely understand that that was definitely capped area but we do know that that area that's in that little uh, that little wedge here this is all uh, trees it's all trees it's all developed um so I'm not really worried about softening up that edge on the uh, southwestern corner of your site. So it would be a nice to see if you could put something on that uh, on the hill on Blackwater, even if it's small. A couple, a couple of trees, break it up. Maybe they'll grow and give something to look at. I guess. Anyway, uh, moving on to the reason I raised my hand. So the your site plan. You, you spoke about the road, right? So you're going to lay down the fabric. You're going to put probably a, what, about a foot or so of gravel on top yeah. of that? That's great at crushed stone. It's like a road basement. Got it. Okay, so um, I know your your drainage is very, very vague, and I, I'm sure that's done intentionally. Um, I get it that you can't dig. You're not allowed to dig, I assume. So you can't make swales. You can't make gullies. You can't make ditches. So your intention is for the water to run along that gravel correct no we've we've got some culverts that will direct in the low points that will direct the water from the east side of that road to the west side so i was the, i was getting to that the drainage <laughs> patterns won't change. okay so yeah and and i guess some of them make sense i mean i'm looking at your existing at your existing grading and where you're putting your culverts that makes perfect sense some of them make perfect sense um i don't know how the water runoff is during peak season during big rain events um, I'm worried about washout. So could you put riprap in there on the high end side? Small. I mean, just so, so that water has something to uh, break up the speed if it gets in. Yeah, it's, I think that's possible. I mean, again, we, we can't dig into the cap. So right. whatever, like everything's built, you know, on top of it. So if we were to put riprap in, I think we could surround the inlet with riprap, if that makes sense. Yes, and, and small riprap, you know, yeah. like, um, you know, half-inch riprap, something, right. something that, that just gives it a little bit of grit, because I'm thinking for conservation, they're going to say that's going to that's gonna erode like crazy. Um, I'm a little bit more nervous, mainly towards the northwest corner. You have two culverts that are, that are up there. They're not really, they're not really swelling, though, the way that some of these other ones, you know, the one that's right in the middle of the site, I get that. That one is perfectly designed. Um, you know, the one that's a couple hundred feet up from Blackwater Road, that one's well designed. Um, heck, even the, even the one closest to Blackwater Road. I have no problem with those three. It's just the two at the very top. So I guess, um, is there anything that you can do to help guide the sheet flow that's going off the site to, um, to those culverts? We'd have to look at the grading to see if we could yeah. build up some kind of level spreader or something like that, but we can't create a basin or a stormwater BMP. I mean, you, you mentioned the stormwater was intentionally vague. What we've done on all landfill projects before is we show, we model it sort of conservatively. This, this cover is a little bit different because it, it is a pervious cover, 
most landfills have an impervious cover so the water is going to go off the same before as it would after so what we look at is we look at the blocks as added impervious even though the total amount of rain the total volume is the same as falling on the landfill as it was before so the slight changes we see are when the the rain hits the panels it might change the time of concentration a little bit but overall it's basically the same um, but we can't construct a, a stormwater BMP on top of the cover so that's really the main focus of our analysis is trying to show that the pre-construction flow patterns and discharge rates are are the same as post-construction right I, I understand I understand I, I used to practice civil engineering so I understand exactly what you're saying um, yeah I'm just worried that if there is if there is a concentration say you know we always say you know we talk about the hundred year storm right you know what's going to happen you know it's all hitting those, it's uh, it's hitting all those panels and it's collecting more you know whereas otherwise the open field is going to go um, over a large area now it's going to be concentrated and it's going through a culvert so um, not to get into the weeds um, definitely going to request please put in riprap on the high end of all those culverts at absolute minimum please mr belmore yeah just a couple of informational points to further close the discussion perhaps or come to a near closure uh, my, although EPA is taking a lead, DES has to, I believe, sign off it on approval in the they state do. of New Hampshire. So uh, they work hand in glove, the regulatory agencies. It, any any change in drainage is going to be um, not our purview. It will be EPA. We have testing wells, uh, and they'll be very concerned about, you know, any change in flow. Uh, it's very important for the water to penetrate the soil to get to the uh, treatment wall so um, any changes are going to be not going to have to be run by them and I'm very reluctant to uh, go back to the drawing board because they're happy with the way the water flows now um, it's very important for the remedy to, to take place as far as along the core the uh, Blackwater Road corridor we have uh, um, gas vents um, methane gas channels and vents so uh, it's very tight between the gas lines and the utility lines and the gas vents to um, play around with anything in that area. So uh, it's, it's, it's a site that's really dictated by EPA and the ES, um, and any changes are, are going to be minimal if best. Um, the riprap should probably be run by EPA and DES. Geosyntex is the Superfund Engineering, and we also did a separate study. So not, not only is DES and EPA drilling down on the plans. Our engineers, in both the city and our partners and Moresco, have paid extra money for geosyntax to scrub the plans and make sure it doesn't adversely affect the treatment itself. So it's, it's a very challenging site, very regulated site uh, to do much of any changes that, uh, that, that are on the table. But um, I appreciate the comments. As I'm sure they will look at the riprap and anything else they can do. Uh, they've been good partners from the get-go. and. Um, I guess I'd wrap it up by there. Other than to point out is if people had a chance to look at the, the mappings and so forth, it's on the old section, um, and the basketball courts are in the landfill. Uh, they are in the landfill, and they are subject to EPA um, you know, purview and DES purview. Uh, we did have baseball fields there that were dismantled and decommissioned by the city council. We had an active uh, recreational site there way, way back in the day. And uh, we had to decommission it, and uh, because all of it is part of the landfill, there's sort of a new section and an old section. This is just the, sort of the old section, and then there's a newer section. So the hope uh, is that it, at some point, if this is successful, it may develop into the, the, the newer section, if you will, for lack of some better words. So hopefully that helped a little bit in understanding the site and the uh, parameters and the challenges involved in making changes. Mr. Horton and Mr. Witham. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> a couple of uh, comments, feedbacks, and thoughts. Um, you didn't really talk about the pavement. Are you going to be removing that or be remain in place? Uh, I want to go uh, back to Mr. Goodwin's comments about uh, kind of the uh, site appearance right now. You know, it's uh, it's even though it's a landfill, you know, it, it is actually a pretty decent looking field as it is, stands right now, um, and that's kind of really my. I, I support the project, but really I think that's kind of my sticking point is I don't want this to turn into kind of an industrial 
type look on that stretch of roadway where it's more field and meadows looking right now. Um, so I, I'd offer that it's kind of hard to read your plans without a lot of detail, um, you know, setbacks on the roads and stuff like that. Uh, I have concern about the, uh, the amount of poles that are just off Blackwater Road. Uh, not knowing the amount of setback that's offered there. I don't know if we need to like get rid of those first two, three sets of pan uh, rows of panels to offer a, a straight line, a consistent line uh, cons uh, parallel to Blackwater. Blackwater. Uh, the point being there is just curb appeal. I know that we recently approved a, a PV farm out at the Dunkin' Donuts on Whitehall Road. It looks good. My biggest heartburn with that one is the is the chain link fence. Uh, you know, just it's just out of place for that type of area. I think. Um, uh, what else we got? I, I I also agree if we can do something with landscaping just to try to uh, screen or soften whatever words you want you want to use that that area uh, would be. Um, certainly appreciated and I just want to kind of just point back to the RSA we kind of glossed over it but uh, RSA 674 colon 54 section 2 reads any use construction or development of land occurring on governmentally owned or occupied land but which is not a government use as defined in the first paragraph shall be fully subject to local land use regulations so I mean we can debate that paragraph but Almost sounds to me like it is government owned, but not being <coughs> uh, used by the government going forward. So I think there's perhaps some debate there. That's all I got right now. Would somebody add? Uh, yes. So we did we did uh, notify the abutters on this project by certified mail, just so everybody is aware of that. Uh, I thought abutters would come out uh, regarding this project, but they did not. Uh, so and this is also this the power is going back for the city correct that's correct yeah so it, it is a governmental use okay mr witham and then mr haven thank you um <coughs> excuse me yeah just uh echo mr belmore's comments about uh the the site um, I'll point to the, the southerly side here, the, the shaded area of the old, now decommissioned basketball courts. Um, and when we did commission them, uh, basically what we did was unbolt the basketball post from the mounting base. We had to leave the mounting base there. Council wasn't really excited about the hut top remaining there. We wanted to pick it up, but we can't. Can't touch it. Um, there are old benches from the old park on the site. We can go with a hacksaw and cut them off, but we can't pull out the concrete base. They don't want us, like, touching the ground there. The fact that EPA is amenable to them using weighted ballast um, is vetted on other properties, so I think we're lucky to get away with that option here. Uh, it's a large tract of land uh, that costs the city millions of dollars to monitor. And I think the view of council in moving forward with this solar array project was to get some benefit out of the property. So that's what brings us here today, you know, partnered with Amoresco. The difficulty with it is, is that yes, it has the appearance of an open field or meadow, that's a good description. Uh, we are putting hundreds of solar arrays. I would note that this is phase one. If this works out well, the next phase is even larger because the second section of the landfill is even bigger. Um, you can plant a couple of shrubs here and there if you are allowed. Uh, you're not going to hide this. It's too big. It is going to be an industrial look uh, on this parcel. There's, there's no getting around that. Uh, you know, we talked about maybe a meeting or two ago, the, the, the solar trackers out on Route 108. We talked about, you know, some sort of vegetation to hide those. You're not going to hide them. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and that's the, the deal. The, this is just a large uh, track of solar arrays that 
is going to be visible from the street, uh, from abutting properties. There's no getting around that. Uh, um, they're required to put up the fence. Uh, I would argue even if you didn't have the fence, it would still be you know, maybe slightly less industrial looking, but not much. Uh, it's going to be corrosion resistant you know, steel or aluminum, which is going to have that industrial look. Uh, the, the good news with the solar panels, as we've heard from other applicants with solar, right, they don't glare, right? They're designed to attract the sun, uh, so they don't, it's not like a mirror-like finish, so I don't think they have to worry about that, but they're going to be visible, and the point that Mr. Berry made is that Blackwater Road, at least in areas of, of the site, is higher than uh, the actual area being uh, placed with uh, the array. So you're going to be looking down in it in some areas. In other areas, it'll be at street level. But it's going to be complicated to hide. I appreciate the, the thoughts. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to do that. Uh, I think we've let the applicant know that there's an opportunity to do that. We'd welcome it, but uh, I'm not sure how much we can do to hide this. It's There it is. <laughs> Mr. Haben? I agree with a lot of that. Um, the other thing I've been looking at uh, in detail is uh, on page uh, C501, the detail on the above ground cable tray <coughs> and the details in the elevation. I don't see where it shows how high it is above the finish grade. So the final electrical design is underway. Um, okay. That's really shown for illustrative purposes only, but it's a It'll be a block just to show that there's nothing that's excavated down into the cover. So typically, in my experience, it's, you know, a couple feet high, something like that. I mean, it, the highest point of this is going to be the top edge of the, the solar array. Right, and that's what I'm looking at. It shows with the, uh, the soils you added were, were about two feet, but it, it doesn't show the hardware above where the cable tray is. And uh, that'll be estimated three feet anyway, right? And the length of run around the... Site yeah, is to to be determined. I mean, it, there's there's only a certain amount of bend in the conduits or the cable tray, so there'll be some that are higher than others. But in no case, I, I don't even think it'll be above the the low end of the panels. Yeah, and the, and the average length of run of this entire cable tray around the site is about how long? I don't know that. The, the electrical design is still underway. Okay, we're we're just the civil engineers. It's just another just for the group. It's just another exposure. Not just the panels, but they'll be exposed as well. Mr. Rhodes and Mr. Robitus and Mr. Goodwin. So I know we've talked a good bit about softening the architecture here to make it look less industrial, not quite as invasive. Counterpoint on this is a thought at ex exercise for folks. There's a subfield that typically gets referred to as hostile architecture or warning architecture. This is a super fun site. It's also a super fun site that, as I understand, is the only one like it in the country in the way that it's capped, covered, and treated on the way out. I'm not sure we want to make a site where the EPA's guidance for it, of, for the love of God, don't dig, attractive. People may walk their dogs through here right now. This thing's contaminated with volatile organics and heavy metals. I'm not comfortable with people walking their dogs through it even. So making a site like that attractive I'm not sure it's something we want. And this coming from somebody who usually argues for, you know, making things look good, have more plantings, things like that. I don't want people going in here. I don't think any of us should. It should look unattractive. Um, I also had a couple questions around the security and fencing on the site. You've got these two shaded areas in here. Those are the old tennis courts and basketball areas. Yeah. Okay, so those are going to remain paved. They will. Um, yeah. Just want to make sure that's what I was looking at with those there. On your fencing diagram, because of those ballasts that are going in, I know it says for illustrative purposes, um, so I'm not sure that's final, but does this really leave a substantial gap at the bottom of the fence down to the soil? No, uh, what, what they do is they run the fence fabric along the ground, okay. and then they cut around the blocks so that the fence fabric can go up, around, and then back okay. down. Makes sense. Um, Want to make sure we didn't have a situation where the fence was more of a suggestion than an actual deterrent. Um, the other question that I had in here is uh, you're pushing a lot of energy through those power lines that go out to Blackwater Road. I know you've said the electrical design is still under consideration. I assume this is in there as well, but do we have any of these really high energy cables that are at ground level outside of the fence line? Okay, so you're able to bury them or elevate them before they get out there? 
That's right. Yeah, they will uh, go onto a riser pole and okay. then connect to Eversources. And the riser pole's inside of the fence line. Okay, just want to make sure we didn't have a, a security or safety hazard there. Um, yeah, beyond that, I know we've had a lot of good ideas around putting down riprap, potentially making things different in terms of the plantings there, but on a unique site where the EPA's guidance is don't dig they're going to want to vet any change to this, I assume, for a substantial period of time. And we're dealing with a Superfund site that's a money sink, that's a physical hazard here. The prospect of getting something good out of it in the sense of megawatts of energy going into the grid from a non-polluting source, it balances the books on this site to do something good on an area that's heavily contaminated. I couldn't be more in favor of this. Mr. Robitis. Um, you know, I appreciate everyone, everyone's desire to um, try to buffer this or shield it as best we can. On the SRTC meeting uh, that we had with them, that discussion came up and we discussed it at length. And just like the arrays out on 108, you know, the more we hide, the less light gets to them and makes them more ineffective, so to speak. I think. You know, the area where the potential, um, whatever they're going to do with the Omri site, I think that's going to be the area that could shield if they're putting in, you know, whatever's going to go there, if it's going to be business, if it's going to be residential, that when those get built out, that any type of shielding could be done um, on the back of those properties to try to shield that. But um, I agree with Mr. Rhodes. Um, I, you know, the city manager might be able to answer this, but I'm not sure. You know, when they talk about the, you know, the how long is it going to be before that site is ever potentially going to be used again? And it's probably thousands of years, you know. So um, at the end of the day, to take something, um, you know, I think all of us drive by that and sort of shake our head like it's there. Um, you know, this is the probably the most positive thing that could ever come out of that site. Um, I, I don't know if there's a way to make it look good, but what's the alternative? Let a site sit there for thousands of years and just do it, nothing with it. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm in favor of doing, um, you know, pretty much seeing this through in this plan. And let's hope that whatever goes into the Omri site and some of those places can shield the back of their properties and uh, soften this as much as we can. But at the end of the day, I, I hate this term, but I'm going to use it. It is what it is. And I think it's time to do something with this and have the city turn this real big negative into at least somewhat of a positive. And I don't see anything other than what's um, shown to us tonight is, is making that happen. So I think it's a good thing for the city. That's a good one. <clears throat> uh, I, I just noticed um, that uh, Parkview Terrace, I believe, in the current condition, sort of <clears throat> turns onto the site, and the, that right-of-way, for lack of a better term, uh, is on the site, and the curb cut shown on the site plan here is actually that paved roadway. Is that staying as it is? Uh, if I'm understanding, you our access road is uh, further... Not your access road. Your access road's off Blackwater Road. Right. There is a street that is called Parkview Terrace, yep. right? And then it goes straight sort of off Blackwater. On the right-hand side is the armory site. In front of you is the baseball field. Um, and currently, it kind of... take. There's a left. You can turn left. Um, Mr. Belmore has a... Uh, can I add to this? It's a, and your curb right away here that connects to, or your your access on um, Maple Street is the right is the paved yeah. area way that I'm talking about. Yeah, it's a dirt road. I, I, again, I, I think the average Summersworth resident sees this as a cut through public access road, and I'm curious in what the proposed future condition is. We're done. I, I think I think he's talking about when you go up Parkview Terrace mm -hmm. between the um, I want to say you look at sheets G zero zero elderly 
You have a satellite image with your outline. You can very clearly see. Nothing's being done to the dirt roadway okay. as part of this project. That's right. Parkview Terrace actually is a public road to, to an extent that's paved, and that, that's out to bid to be repaved, but it doesn't entail any component of this project. Okay, so that, so for all intents and purposes, it's gonna, the condition's gonna remain, that dirt road is gonna be there, and folks are gonna be able to cut through the site in the future. Okay. Yeah, just a little further on that, so <clears throat> it's a little odd, right? So you got Parkview Terrace that comes in off of Blackwater Road that's paved uh, up until where you go into the Little League field. It is paved a little bit to the left and it turns to uh, unimproved dirt roadway. Uh, when you round up by the rec building and enters the Parkview Terrace apartment complex, uh, there's an old rec building on the corner. It then returns to pavement there that goes out to Maple Street. There is a, a diagram on the map too, uh, one of the diagrams that shows the Parkview Terrace leg coming in off of Blackwater Road, continuing straight out to Maple Street. Uh, that is a paper road, <laughs> never mind a dirt road. It exists on paper, but it, it's not real. Uh, <laughs> it stops at the Little League Field parking lot. There is no straight out to Maple Street there. Uh, uh, you would find, though, that there is a water line that goes from Maple Street to Blackwater Road under that leg of Parkview Terrace. So Parkview Terrace is a sort of a nebulous street. It's, it's used heavily on the end by the fire station. Uh, it's used only for the Little League access off of the section off of Blackwater Road. And in between, as has been described, it's used occasionally as a cut through. However, it is not plowed in the wintertime, so that cut through stops. So I'm not sure that helped any, but it's a quirky piece of real estate. <laughs> Got it. You, you answered the question of my quirk. So I do want to follow up on the uh, conversation with... Um, uh, screening um, and m my position on this is uh, listen I want this to happen I think solar is an excellent use for the site understood solar has a particular look the topography is what it is we are going to see these panels I'm proud that the community is going to see these panels I think solar is something they can and should see and ground mounted panels like this are a more aesthetic option than other versions my concern is that we have a seven foot tall hostile fence. I am rarely, if ever, an opponent for hostile architecture. The community, if I lived across from this, I would be, I would be here making comments. They're not here tonight. <laughs> I'm hoping that uh, my advocacy here is not on deaf ears. I am certain that when this is built, people are gonna be like, that's ugly as hell, and it's in my neighborhood. And I don't want children playing there. I don't want people on the site. That's what the seven foot tall fence is for with warning signs on it saying high voltage. If we want to, you know, belt and suspenders, we could sign it with a whole bunch of super fun signage to super fund signage to make it very clear that this is not a site for recreation. Frankly, that should have, could and should have been done prior to now if that was a concern. I think we have an example here where the city is leading this effort with good intent. We have broad control over this site and what happens here. And this is the first phase of a two-phase project, and I want to set us up for success and set the right precedent with the community and future phases. And I think that includes being mindful about how this looks in the most minimal way. Like, no offense to you, but literally no effort has been put into the aesthetics of the site. None. This is in the middle of town. It's a residential area. People recreate here nearby. Historically, they recreate here. People walk along this secondary road because Blackwater and Maple Streets are relatively busy. Uh, there are, there's a baseball field that, for all we know, is going to stay here indefinitely. So there are you know, families that congregate nearby. Um, I, I personally think it's unconscionable that we are not making some effort to soften this, the appearance of this. I think the community would want us to do that. And, uh, you know, I hear you that there are limitations, there are cost concerns. I don't want to hold things up. I don't want to derail this project. However, I do want feedback from the EPA or whoever on the feasibility of this. And I don't think that's unreasonable. And I think it should be done as, a, as the precedent center for this to be well received by the community so we can do a phase two 
and provide more clean energy and better utilize a site that is otherwise not utilizable. So uh, with that, I yield. Can, can I just Pardon? offer one thing? Nope. Oh, excuse me. Um, one thing that does help that we've seen on other sites is instead of like the galvanized, really industrial looking sort of silver fence is a black vinyl coated fence. Um, I don't know if you've seen that in any places, but the black vinyl tends to sort of fade back in and you know, it doesn't, it doesn't black, stick out as much. But it, this is going to feel more like a prison yard than, than something that belongs in the center of a residential neighborhood, right? And I, again, I'm not trying to demean anything else about this project other than the fact that if you had literally added a berm with uh, a brevity along the edge on the frontage on Blackwater and on uh, Parkview Terrace, I'd be like, sweet, build it. But the fact that that's not there and that thought hasn't been provided or vetted with EPA is what I'm flagging here. So Horton. Uh, thank you, Mr. Goodman. He much better uh, at articulating my feelings as well. I, I support this project through and through as well. I think uh, I go, I kind of lean towards the same point as, you know, I, I don't want this to be unattractive as we drive by it every day. Um, you know, uh, jumping in back to the riser poles, how far are those seven telephone poles off the edge of Blackwater Road? Yeah, it's hard to tell. Well, I mean, it, the plan is to scale. I just to bring my scale. Um, and are they? Is it true or not true that they're included within the fence line? So my point here really is just you know really need to make considerations to. Um, what this is going to look like as we drive by every day and, and not be a prison farm, you know. I, again, I support the project. I'd just like to make sure we're taking the reasonable steps to make it as attractive as possible, I guess. That's all I got. Mr. Witham. Thank you. Um, I love the idea of shopping. I, I think the bl black vinyl, at, at least along the edges of the, the, the two roadways, the, those sides make sense. I tend to agree with you, it tends to, to, to fade a bit into the background and may fade well into the black solar panel, so that will help. It doesn't make it go away, right, but I think it helps, so I think that's a reasonable uh, accommodation here. Um, I would also note, and I, I know this isn't about trade-offs, right, but as the, the, the National Guard readiness property gets redeveloped, there is lots of much higher fencing there uh, on the Little League field side of that uh, property. The fence, I believe, is 12, 14 feet high with barbed wire on the top. And I believe around the rest of the property is at least eight feet high with barbed wire on the top. A very industrial, militaristic look. Uh, that will ultimately be going away. Um, in lieu of this, uh, th this is probably going to look better than that. So uh, trade-offs all day. Uh, you know, if we could screen it effectively, that's great. I think there are limitations. I think the black vinyl fencing helps. Um, I wish there just were better ideas, but it's, it's a pretty limiting site. Uh, discuss that at ad nauseum, so I'll leave it at that. But I do like the idea of at least the the black vinyl fencing on the street sides. I think that helps. Doesn't make it perfect, but it helps. Okay, hey, thank you for the presentation. No further action to, uh, to take at this time, right? None okay. this evening. Item D, any new Business coming before the board, Director Mears. None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Item 5, workshop business. Item A, revision of site plan review regulations, section 13.1, assurances for completion and maintenance of improvements. Director Mears. Yes, so you should have received my memo regarding the revision of the site plan regulations. 
Uh, we talked about this at last month's meeting. And this is a public hearing to receive public input and approve the amendment to the site plan regulations, section 13.1, to include performance bonds as an acceptable performance surety consistent with the subdivision re regulations and to revise to have the director of planning and community development as the reviewer in place of the city engineer. This is a public hearing for approval of the language as discussed at the October meeting and I did provide the redlined version with revisions. Yeah, very well open to public hearing. There's no one in the chambers. Do you have any correspondence concerning the item? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Questions on the board? Close public hearing. Mr. Witham. Yeah, Motion. I move that the proposed amendment to the site plan review regulation section 13.1 regarding assurances uh, be approved. Motion made by Mr. Witham. Seconded by Mr. Robitis. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Communications and miscellaneous. Director Mears. I do have a couple updates. Uh, we did submit a Brownfields grant for the Prince's Garage on Monday uh, for cleanup of that site. Uh, we also uh, provided the meeting schedule for 2024 on your desk. And next month, uh, staff has been working on subdivision regulation updates. Uh, so we will be sharing those with you next month. Thank you. Mr. Witham. Just under communications, and perhaps I should have done this under my council report. Um, City of Summersworth City Council formed a uh, community power committee. Uh, this is a phase in ultimately joining the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire. And that committee has met a couple of times at our meeting, I believe it was last week. Uh, we uh, wordsmith the Joint Powers Services Agreement, which ultimately needs to get approved by council uh, and submitted to the Community Power Coalition of uh, New Hampshire. Um, all of this is a stepwise process. There will be some public hearings in the coming months regarding this. Ultimately, to hopefully tee up joining the Community Power Coalition uh, sometime in the spring of 2024. Uh, outwardly to residents, uh, it would not show anything different than what you're currently receiving. You would still get your electric power bill. Uh, uh, the power is still supplied to your house by Eversource. It's just the power generation. If you look at your electric bill, there's the distribution and the generation portion of the bill. Um, for Eversource customers, if this all moves forward as we predict, uh, you are automatically enrolled in the Community Power Coalition uh, buying power, if you will. Um, there are about 24 or 30 communities in it now, and that continues to grow. Uh, the thought process is a greater buying power by a, a mass of a number of communities than by individual communities or individual ratepayers. So ultimately, the, uh, your, your, it's conceivable that your electric bill goes down uh, because the generation portion is less. Uh, so residents and businesses with automat well, of Eversource power generation would automatically be enrolled in this. Uh, you are allowed to opt out. And if you opt out, you're allowed at any point in time in the future to opt back in. I share that with you because there's a fair amount of community outreach and communication that needs to occur regarding this. Uh, the committee locally is aware of that. We have provided a number of template informations. We're looking to at least initially uh, maybe do some mailings, use uh, obviously the website, uh, community access television, things of that nature. But if uh, board members have other ideas, we'd certainly entertain those. Uh, Mr. Horn, you a member of the committee? Yes. Okay. Right. Remind me to add you ne next month in the committee reports. Duly noted. Any other uh, communication miscellaneous? Entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made by Mr. Robias, second by Mr. Belmore. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you.